Hey folks, my name is Prathamesh. I work at Last Nine as an SRE and evangelist. I'll be talking today on bringing down the pillars of observability uh, from data to outcomes. I'm really excited to talk about this topic as it is extremely close to my heart. Observability, reliability, monitoring is something that I'm really excited about. Uh, and I'm happy to share my thoughts uh, with you today. Let's get started. Observability is the ability to measure the internal state of the system, right? Uh, by examining its outputs from the outside. A system is considered observable uh, if the current state can be estimated by only using the information from the outputs that can be inferred from the system. Uh, it tells us what is wrong uh, and more importantly, why it is wrong. Observability is crucial in the today's uh, cloud native environment specifically as uh, as, an, as an observable system is easier to maintain for DevOps and SRE teams than a non-observable or opaque system. Teams infer the state of a system, plan for degradations, capacity planning, performance management, based on the level of observability that a system has. So observability is not just something that is not completely isolated from a system, but it is a fundamental property of the system itself, as it can help us in making sure that the outcomes that we expect from the system are tracked, measured, and reported about. If we search about observability on Google, uh, you'll find tons and tons of blog posts around observability pillars, MELT, M-E-L-T. All of these search results are about like logs, metrics, and traces. So much so uh, that the first introduction to observability for a lot of people uh, will happen via these posts. MELT is a popular acronym for metrics, events, logs, traces. And a lot of times we will come across this term when we search about observability. Metrics, events, logs, traces, these are the basically data types uh, that observable systems emit uh, via automatic telemetry. The observability journey for a lot of people and organizations starts with instrumentation where data is collected from different microservices, different components of our cloud native infrastructure, APIs, uh, infrastructure components in the form of telemetry. These data are used to understand the system health, faults, uh, troubleshooting, degradations, uh, for exploring dashboards and even alerting, visualization, uh, with the help of various observability and monitoring tools. There are both open source uh, tools such as ELK Stack, Prometheus, Jaeger, uh, and a lot of uh, proprietary tools as well, like Last9, New Relic, uh, which are like observability platforms uh, that we can use. Metrics, logs, events, traces, these are called as pillars of observability for a reason, because they define the backbone on which the rest of the cathedral of our observability suite is built. Uh, they are the fundamental data types uh, that systems uh, can emit data about themselves uh, that can be used to infer the state of the system. And uh, if you're not already aware, MELT is slightly outdated these days. Uh, there is also a temple acronym, which also covers uh, exceptions and profiling apart from uh, metrics, logs, events, and traces. Uh, so all of these telemetry data type form the backbone on which uh, a lot of the observability and monitoring systems are built uh, today. But if I don't have logs or metrics or even traces, uh, do I lack observability? That is the question that I would like to discuss today. Uh, is my new service only 33% observable if I start using only metrics and I don't have logs and traces? Uh, where should I go when an incident happens? Should I use my logs, metrics, traces, or events? Uh, is my data duplicated across my logs and traces or metrics? Uh, I want to use either one of these data types, but what is the cost of adoption across the entire organization for that telemetry data? What is the storage cost? What is the maintenance cost? Uh, and most importantly, does it make my system more observable? Does it give me the answers uh, that I'm looking for? I'll try to address some of these questions uh, in today's talk. And it's important to discuss uh, why this matters today, right? Uh, in today's cloud native environments, workloads have changed completely. Uh, things are more dynamic than uh, they were static a uh, few years before. Uh, infra is mostly cattle. It is ephemeral most of the times where pods and containers are coming out of the blue based on the scaling strategies that are decided in our cloud native infrastructure. Services are dynamic. Uh, there are service meshes uh, and microservices which are getting created on the fly, uh, getting provisioned on the fly. And uh, they are also uh, emitting this observability data. 
Uh, if you look at an example of, let's say, a three node cluster, Kubernetes cluster that is running 10 namespaces with some deployments, around five deployments, right? It emits around 16.5K time series uh, per minute across all metrics. And this is just using the default cube state metrics library that is extremely popular uh, for Kubernetes monitoring. And if you think about what all it covers, it covers pod metrics, deployment metrics, replica set, daemon set, job metrics, everything. There can be metrics and uh, samples that are duplicated across all of these. There can be some, some metrics that are completely missing, but are important from the health perspective. But by default, this libra these libraries with auto instrumentation enable a lot of metrics and uh, observability data. This results into four aspects that I would like to talk about. Uh, first is obviously the volume because of the ephemeral nature of the data uh, of the infrastructure as well as a dynamic nature of services. The volume of telemetry data goes beyond a predictable limit at most of the times. Also, there is velocity and variety because of the uniqueness uh, that a lot of this uh, infrastructure components possess. And all of this results into complexity. But more importantly, everything is tied down to cost. Observability cost is not something that only engineering teams discuss. Recently, in one of the talk at uh, one of the popular observability conference, Monitroma, just a few weeks back, uh, there was a talk where uh, uh, the speaker was from a, a venture capitalist background, and he mentioned that uh, observability cost is also discussed during the board meetings these days. It has become that much crucial. I think all of you might have uh, read recent news about one company paying millions and millions of dollars to Datadog uh, uh, for, for their observability. So cost has become extremely crucial uh, with respect to observability and monitoring. And cost can be broken down into different parts like cardinality, which is basically talks about the volume of data, uh, operations of maintaining the system, maintaining the pipelines for telemetry, maintaining the pipelines for alerting, visualizations, and so on. Uh, then obviously making sure that the observability stack also scales as your application scales and whole toil around uh, managing all of this, making sure that things are working uh, as expected. And most importantly, giving the outcomes uh, that we started with while looking at our observability data. So. There are questions, right, uh, that we have to answer. Should I create a new metric store because I have to uh, basically support observability in my Kubernetes stack? Uh, should I use distributed tracing because now I have more than 10 microservices in my uh, application suite? Should I dump everything to logs? What to do? There are a lot of questions uh, that we have to answer and a lot of people get overwhelmed by all of this data uh, that gets generated uh, out of the uh, out of the current cloud native systems but let's go one step back and think about instead of data think about the outcomes that we want from this data there can be different use cases for this observability data uh, for devops and sre teams to know the system behavior application performance understand dependencies performance issues and most importantly making sure that customer experience is not affected Telemetry data should answer most, if not all the questions uh, that we can see here. And effectively what it comes down to is basically to find out unknown failures before they happen. That is what observability is all about. To prevent hampering the customer experience and business impact before uh, it, it results into revenue loss or profit loss or even customer loss. So instead of thinking from the data as the first class citizen, let's try to see which questions we can ask so that we can get these outcomes. If you think about at a broad level, top three questions that we can ask for any incident or any degradation that is happening in our system, uh, they can be converted into these three questions. Basically, what is wrong? Did we change anything? And what can we do so that it doesn't repeat? These are the broad questions that a SRE or DevOps team can ask if something bad is happening to your system and then recover from it. The answers that we want are basically around, uh, we need to know what has happened. We need to communicate it to our customers or the uh, relevant stakeholders and then recover from it. Because most of the times when an incident or a failure is detected, a natural inclination is to find root cause of the incident and debug it right away. Although doing it in real time as the incident is already underway can be counterproductive because you're as you are debugging uh, the incident, 
the customer experience is getting affected. The quality of the customer experience, the user experience is already degraded. Debugging is a best done activity post factor once the incident is mitigated. And programmers and developers need granular log data, trace data to find out the root cause during that debugging process. The first priority when an incident happens uh, is always to understand the impact, communicate, and then mitigate or recover from the failure. Site reliability engineers or DevOps engineers are the front line in our organization to deal with such kind of incidents. And they have to be e equipped with all things that we can equip them with so that they can take these three crucial actions in any organization. Uh, obviously, a lot of organizations have different job titles for SREs these days, but the function is essentially same. They have to answer the questions about why something happened. They need to know about it. They need to communicate it with other stakeholders, and then they should be able to recover from the incident so that somebody can debug and root cause it later. The answers that we want then are classified into understanding the system health in a quick way so that we can take quick decisions to recover from the incidents. And this whole process is very time sensitive. You cannot really spend a lot of time going through granular data to understand uh, how the system is behaving. You need to have quick ways to understand the system health from a high level perspective and then take decisions based on that. At the same time, once the incident is mitigated, uh, you will need to root cause it. That requires a level of testing and correctness because at that time you are making sure that the incident is completely resolved and it cannot happen again. So it requires a property which is related to accuracy and correctness more than time. It's not a time sensitive process uh, that is uh, which is related to uh, understanding the system well, but debugging is more uh, towards correctness and accuracy than being time sensitive. So now based on these outcomes and decisions, let's look at melt again from the outcome based point of view, as that will force us to use what we need for the results that we want instead of going from the data first approach, uh, instead of going in the reverse direction. So let's look at melt 201. I'll start with logs because they are the easiest to discuss, uh, right? So logs are basically a um, dump of how the system is behaving in real time. Uh, they can be as descriptive as we want. We can literally put anything inside logs and that will get uh, printed or uh, that will get outputted uh, in, in the console. They can be, uh, they are basically easiest to start with as they can be anything. Uh, simple print statements such as hello or uh, a simple uh, structured log like I have an example here uh, for a, a web application. So basically logs are best for debugging because they can help me understand which particular line of code is having a problem. But if you think about it, we also need to know what to search for in case of logs, because there can be too many of those logs all the time. Uh, different languages, frameworks, tools have their own logging formats. This makes logs harder to standardize across tools, services, and teams. Logs are best used for debugging and one of the best friends, according to me, of software developers, as they can pinpoint to the exact line, uh, which is the culprit during troubleshooting and debugging process. Uh, there are tools such as Plunk, Paper Trail, uh, which basically provide solutions for logging. So if you think about uh, logs from a high level perspective, uh, they're easy to get started and easy to adopt, uh, but their volume can proliferate very quickly. Horror stories of logs, quota, basically depleting because of a third party service that you you are depending on uh, change their response are not unheard of like it will cause a lot of exceptions in your system and start depleting the quota uh, with the cloud natives kubernetes environments um, modern applications basically emit too much of log data and that can have problems uh, with the amount of logs uh, that are getting collected in your storage uh, and then making sense of it so volume is extremely problematic uh, with amount of logs that are generated uh, in today's uh, modern applications. It also is harder to standardize as we discussed because different languages and tools have their own logging formats. There is no standard format of logging that everybody can follow. Uh, this also uh, makes it harder to parse that log data and make sense out of it. Also logs are not really helpful uh, in understanding system health because they're too, too granular. Like, let's say I have uh, HTTP 500 errors and I want to know 
what is the rate of those errors in last one day. Uh, it's not possible to do uh, just by understanding and looking at raw logs. Like I have to basically uh, read each and every line from my uh, logging uh, to understand uh, what is that rate. But uh, otherwise it is not possible. And that also makes it very hard for logs uh, to reveal system insights like anomalies, like patterns because of the granular data. Unless you run some functions on top of it, it's extremely hard to understand those system insights uh, from just the raw logs data. Logs also don't have relationships. So by relationships, what I mean is when you are in a, a cloud native environment with microservices, uh, one service calling another service uh, is not possible uh, inside logs, right? Because that data is disconnected from each other. So you have two sources of data. Uh, to figure out uh, how the request is flowing through different services. These are some of the challenges and uh, uh, problems that are associated with logs. Now we'll talk about metrics. Metrics are basically quantifiable measurements uh, of the health of the system. And they are the fastest and cheapest way to understand the system health because they are aggregated. They give bird eye view of the system's performance. And for example, of like some of the uh, popular examples of metrics are like CPU percentage of an EC2 instance, cache hit rate of my Redis database or latency uh, P99 or P90 of a particular API endpoint. These are some of the examples of metrics. As we discussed, they are aggregated uh, and then they also have dimensions which allow me to slice and dice based on different attributes. Like uh, I can do it based on uh, the mode of the payment. I can do it based on the latency bucket. I can do it based on the region from which the request came up and so on. By the way, did you encounter uh, or heard about the recent uh, SVB crisis, uh, Silicon Valley Bank crisis that basically caused panic in the startup industry for a few days? Um, that issue was resolved, but how did the US authorities um, come to know about it? Using some key indicators uh, that they were observing, uh, which started deteriorating over time. Uh, they fixed the issue over the weekend and then continue to debug it, root cause it, finding out the exact culprit over the next few days and weeks. I think that process is still going on. Uh, but the first priority was to mitigate using the key indicators, which were nothing but metrics. Uh, so that is one of the example uh, of how metrics can be useful uh, in understanding the system health uh, and then taking decisions based on that. So metrics are uh, easy to adopt because uh, the standardization uh, can happen via standard libraries across tools, across languages, uh, but getting started can be tricky because you have to instrument that code. You have to set up uh, tooling around, uh, around your applications and processes like time series database, collectors, scrapers, and so on. Uh, so that the metrics are collected and pushed to a central place. Uh, there can be excess volume of metrics as well, uh, which happens most of the times because uh, unique combinations of dimensions go beyond a certain limit. Uh, and this especially happens in cloud native environments because pods, containers, these are like ephemeral labels. And if we use them as dimensions in our metrics, uh, as we scale up, scale down, the, uh, the unique combinations of our metrics can go beyond uh, the predefined limit. While debugging is hard using metrics because the data is already aggregated and aggregated data cannot give us the same granular information that probably logs can give us. Uh, metrics are extremely important and helpful in terms of understanding the system health. Uh, they can reveal a lot of system insights around anomalies, patterns um, based on uh, their aggregated data, which is uh, obviously aggregated out of the box. So these are some of the uh, pros and cons of metrics, uh, and this can help us in deciding how we can use them uh, when we actually start using this uh, telemetry data. Then comes trace. Trace is basically the complete journey of a request or workflow uh, as it moves from one part of the system to another. Uh, it is basically achieved by adding a like a standard trace ID uh, as the request or action flows through all the hops. Uh, each time uh, the context of the current state is also forwarded to the next execution hop. Uh, shared trace ID is basically passed around which connects all the dots. And this is uh, essentially called as uh, the distributed tracing. Uh, trace data is made up of small spans. Uh, basically span is nothing but a single unit of work uh, in the distributed system. And that is the primary block of uh, distributed tracing. 
a trace represents a scope request either a user request or a transaction uh, which is flowing through different components and then uh, we can we can basically figure out how it is flowing through that uh, uh, that particular transaction and we can inspect each and every hop inside that transaction uh, to figure out where the problem was uh, now one important difference between traces logs and metrics uh, as we saw earlier logs and metrics uh, didn't have directionality uh, but in case of traces they do have directionality that allows us to uh, understand the relationships uh, between different components and then each basically each trace uh, comprises of multiple work units uh, so we can figure out how the whole um, uh, request or a transaction is flowing through the entire system and figure out where the problem is happening similar to logs traces also makes uh, debugging easier uh, but again uh, unlike metrics uh, they don't provide a uh, lot of system health uh, understanding uh, because the data is too much of granular other problem with traces is also adoption and getting started uh, because across all teams uh, they have to uh, start uh, like emitting traces uh, like by uh, using libraries or other tools uh, by the way uh, there are standard libraries like open telemetry and other uh, others which are which help in standardization of traces but still adopting them across organizations still remains a challenge they can help in debugging and with relationships uh, but not really with uh, understanding system health events they are the hardest to define because they are the most uh, not talked about uh, telemetry data type uh, but we'll try uh, we'll try attempting uh, to give <laughs> give an answer for what events are uh, event is basically um, a change event uh, that can mean a pod restart or a deployment or a configuration flag change uh, and then uh, they can also happen over time like a performance or a frequency or absence of something uh, let's say average hourly takeoffs from the san francisco airport uh, in the last week uh, they can also be something where the data is of interest like how many times arsenal won in epl uh, english premier league so these are uh, these are some of the examples of events uh, they can be structured logs as well they can be schema based json events as well domain events like kubernetes uh, events as well uh, in cloud native deployments uh, they can unlock correlation because they can provide us information additional uh, to what metrics logs and traces can provide and they can also have multiple attributes so dimensionality is also possible with events uh, getting started and adoption is difficult because there is no standardization uh, but they can help us in uh, health and system insights as they can help us in uh, correlation uh, of the data uh, with other telemetry data such as metrics logs and traces so combining all of this and then going back to uh, the original uh, problem that we were trying to discuss uh, the answers that we want uh, from the system were around knowing communicating and recovering and that falls into the bucket of sres and devops and metrics events are the best data uh, that we can uh, use uh, to get those answers but at the same time when we want to debug something when we want to analyze something or root cause fi find out why something failed uh, after the incident is recovered uh, that can happen post factor where programmers and developers can use basically um, logs and traces all the granular data that our systems can emit and then figure out um, why something broke uh, in that place so it's not about having enough coverage or following the three pillars of observability uh, but it is mostly about what we can use uh, for what purpose so that uh, we can get the best outcome uh, that individual teams uh, need at times instead of looking at it from a single lens of three pillars of observability or four pillars of observability uh, we basically broke down that into outcomes and that helped us understand uh, how this data can be used for different use cases so while metrics events logs traces uh, form the backbone of today's observability and monitoring tools uh, and also termed as uh, key pillars of observability uh, understanding what data we can use for what purpose uh, is extremely important uh, because of too much noise system health can be extremely hard uh, to infer from logs and traces whereas metrics events can give us that information very cheaply uh, in a cost effective manner and then teams can debug using traces logs after the incident is recovered uh, and that can help us move forward quickly uh, without uh, getting overwhelmed by a lot of data 
uh, that we, that some of the problems that we discussed earlier uh, in our discussion, uh, those problems get automatically resolved uh, because we are thinking from the outcome perspective, customer experience perspective, instead of thinking from a data first uh, approach. That's all I have today. Um, you can check out our blog, um, lastname.io slash blog, where we write uh, articles related to reliability and observability. Uh, I also run a Discord community uh, which uh, for which I have pasted a link here. So I uh, would love to catch up uh, with all of you and discuss about uh, some of these things uh, in our Discord community. Uh, and also uh, I have linked uh, the link to our white paper. Uh, we have a time series data warehouse called as Levitate. Uh, which solves the challenges around uh, high cardinality, high volume metrics and events um, ingestion, as well as uh, the whole management part of it. Uh, so would love to uh, share and know more about uh, that as well. Um, that's all I have. Thank you.